I don't know, man. I just think the 30-year loan, right? Like, from the time that, seriously, I don't even know when it was invented. I'd say the 30s or something. Because at the time that it was invented, someone would have been like, 30 years to pay off a house? Are you crazy? That's like your whole adulthood. Well, you know? I mean, the thing, too, to, to remember is that life expectancy was shorter, too. So, right. if, you, if your life expectancy was 60 years old. Right. And you didn't buy a house till you were 19 or 20 years old. Uh -huh. And you had a 30-year loan. By golly, you're going to be paying on that loan till the day you die. Right. And that's right. nobody's idea of the American dream. Right. What I'm perplexed about, by is the amount of people that think, you know, I can get this $300,000 house, get a 30-year loan, and then what? 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 What's the end game there? Is the end game so that you own this big house? Because I'm here to tell you, when I'm 70 years old, I don't want to be cutting 10 acres worth of grass. Right. I don't want to be having to clean five and six bathrooms. Right. And, you know, you're trying just as hard to push your babies out the door to college so you can get a little, little time alone again, but you've got this big old house. So when you put it on the market, by that point, after taxes and appreciation and assessment and all that, you're looking at, you know, a five hundred, five hundred fifty thousand dollar house. Exactly. So who's going to buy that except for people who are in your economic bracket to begin with, which are people who are looking to sell their five hundred and fifty thousand dollar house? Absolutely. Yeah. The start, the sticker price of a house is a facade. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's it's, it's smoke and mirrors. You know, I think that. 10 years, to me, seems maximum to pay for, for a house. You know, like, if you can't, to me, that's what, like, you hear, like, uh, real estate professionals, whatever, they're like, you should, uh, say, 30% of your income, and nothing more, that's what you should qualify for. 30%? Probably one of, the, crazy. one of the other bad things, and I'm guilty of this, too, is the allure of the no down payment. Right. Because what it does is it says you can be in this house today without even putting anything down. Right. So you're starting out your relationship with that house or in that house. There's a tiny house over there in the parking lot. It's the one we're building. Oh, nice. It's, it's right over there. If we got time, we can swing by. Yeah, we got time. Nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got no time. <laughs> um, if you're starting out your relationship with this house with no skin in the game. Right. So it's like, I didn't have to save anything to get this house. So you're automatically assuming you've got one up on them. Oh, well, you know, we can start making the payments this month because we didn't have to save up for a down payment. So we'll just dip into our savings, right. assuming someone has savings. We're just going to dip into our savings to make this payment. Second bad thing that, that to me that has happened with the real estate market is this idea of, well, you don't have to make your first payment for six months because we've right. got to process all the paperwork and all that stuff. Right. So you get used to living in this house but paying the same overhead you've been paying before the house. Right. So you've got this false sense of security. Right. And then that payment book comes in the... Well, I guess they don't do payment books anymore, but you get that email that says your mortgage is due and all of a sudden you're going, whoa, whoa. This no, it's already been drafted out. Yeah, this, right. doesn't, this doesn't fit my budget at all. Right. And it's too late. It's too late at that point. You're yeah. in it. And not just that with the zero. You, we have the, uh, what's it called? The PMI mortgage or something if you don't owe 20%. So there's all these institutions that have been put in place to like screw you. You know what I mean? So like to the point where if you don't pay cash for a house or if you like, it doesn't, in a matter of speaking, it doesn't even make sense. You'd be better off to go rent a cheap place. Yeah. You know? And then, you, you know, you it. get into the argument about rent. Well... What's the point of rent? Yeah, you have a, a roof over your head, all that, but if you're talking about from an investment standpoint, what is the point of rent other than the fact that, hey, I don't know where I want to be in life, so I'm just renting this place for a couple of months to see what the community's like. Right. I know people that have rented for years and years and years and years, and I think to myself, are you happy with that situation? Because now if you want to enter into a home buying situation, right. what have you been able to save by renting in order to move yourself into a house. You have nothing to show for nothing. except the time. That, I mean, yeah, but you know who does have to show for? The landlord. The landlord has a ton of equity to show for. But good for them for doing that. That's you know? right. I mean, that's fine for them, but it's like, I don't know, man. I think the best way you can go is a tiny house. If you're someone who's willing to be content for a long time. Yeah. And let's define tiny house because I think here's my big issue. Just because I say tiny house does not mean I'm talking about a tumbleweed, fencil, 
with cedar lap siding and a, and a maroon, you know, uh, metal roof. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not talking about that. When I'm talking about the tiny house, I'm talking about the tiny house in general. Tiny being small, minuscule, minimum. House being domicile, you know, uh, protective habitat. So I'm talking about a protective habitat that is smaller than the norm. Right. Whether that's on a foundation or a trailer or what have you, if we could all adjust our minds to say, life is not about wants sometimes. Sometimes life is just about needs. What do I need yeah. to be happy? And then what do I want to be happy? Because what I found out, Stephen, is that if I follow just my wants, uh -huh. my happiness is short term. Right. It, it only, it has a shelf life. But if I follow my needs, I am always thankful and happy. You eat a meal and you go, man, I am so thankful I'm not hungry anymore. Right. You know, there's a different value system that's set into place. And I wonder, has the modern tiny house movement, have we forgotten that? Have we forgotten the, the basic uh, precipice, if you will, of what first started, we'll say in 2007, 2008? Have we gotten to a point where it's just HGTV manufactured smoke and mirrors? Well, going back to what you said, here's how I look at it. Look at all this airspace. This is kind of out there, so stay, stick with me. Look at all this airspace around you, right? Uh -huh. there's, there's, once you encapsulate that with what is called your home, it's your responsibility. You know what I mean? So it's almost like you can look at it as a square foot as a unit of responsibility. Okay. Right? So once you get, the more of those that you do, the more responsibility is going to come at the time of time and money, your two most important assets. So going on what you're saying, needs, how much do you really and truly need? Yep. Right? That's how I look at it. I don't know. Anything. I agree. And I'm a person who loves being outdoors. I love being outside. As soon as springtime hits, I want to be outside at the grill or in the yard or yeah. at the beach or something like that. Yeah. I don't like to be cooped up in a house, so having 2,000 square foot would do me no emotional good. Right. I don't want to be inside. Even when I have to be inside, I don't want to be inside. Yeah. You know, we have a we were gifted a television by my wife's parents. It serves a purpose as mostly a piece of art on the wall. It's hardly ever on. We don't have cable. You know, maybe on a Friday we'll get a red box movie or something like that. Yeah. But we don't want to be inside that long. We can't pay attention to what's going on inside because we see the sun outside or we see it's a nice day or yeah. even sometimes when it rains we just want to be out there i think the perfect candidate for a tiny house dweller is someone who's content and can stay that way for a long period of time without keeping their eyes on the prize and not getting let what they call it lifestyle creep kind right of come into the whole situation i think that's the perfect tiny house dweller candidate yeah you think i agree i agree and i think it's someone who can look past slick marketing and slick advertising and yeah. say I, I don't need a toy with my breakfast cereal the cereal's good enough in the first place right. I don't need a toy to make me buy it you know my daughter loves to go through not that we let her but she loves to go through the McDonald's drive through because to get a Happy Meal Yeah. ask her what she wants a toy, we're going to turn left up here okay a toy. She wants the toy. She doesn't want the food, doesn't want the box, doesn't care nothing about that. She wants the toy. Right here? Yeah. Okay. And I think that's what's happened to us is we've gotten to this place where it's not anymore about what will sustain us. It's about all these silly little bells and whistles that go with it. And we're going to turn left at the light. So, you know, it's a complex situation and I don't expect everyone to understand. It took me a long time. Left at the light. It took me a long time to get to the place that I'm at. And, you know, I, I, I said a little bit earlier, we live in an 800 square foot house. It's this first left. Okay. We live in an 800 square foot house, but in that 800 square feet, there are times where the three of us occupy all of like 20 square feet. We're on top of each other mm -hmm. because we want to be on top of each other. Yeah. Well, to summarize it for me, be happy, be content. That's it. That's, That's all it, it takes.